Hello everyone. From today onwards, you will be studying about uh, different types of injuries like uh, sprains, fractures, bruise, graze, cut, burn, stings, etc. So, injury is defined in the Indian Penal Code, Section 44. Here, injury is defined as any harm, whatever illegally caused to any person in mind, body, reputation or property. So, you have to study this definition by heart. This is a, a very usual question in your VIVA examinations, define injury. So injury is basically any harm, whatever illegally caused to any person in his mind, his body, his reputation or uh, to his property. In section 319 IPC, definition of hurt is mentioned. So hurt is defined as any pain, disease, infirmity or deformity in the body part of a human being. And medically, injury is defined as any continuity or breach in the anatomy of the body. So legal definition is any harm, whatever illegally goes to any person in body, mind, reputation or property. Medical definition is any discontinuity or breach in the anatomy of the body. We have to learn uh, the definition of assault. This is described in section 351 to 358 of IPC. Here, assault is defined as fear or apprehension that a criminal force may be used against him so as to lead to some hurt. So assault is basically a fear or apprehension that a criminal force may be used against him. It is not the actual act, but a fear or apprehension that a criminal force may be, may be used against him so as to lead to some hurt. The actual use of criminal force on the body is called battery. And criminal force is also defined in section 350 IPC, that is, which causes fear of hurt. Now, we have to learn about the different IPCs uh, starting from 319 to 326, which deals with different types of hurt. So in uh, section 319 IPC, there is definition of hurt, in section 320 IPC, uh, it defines grievous hurt. 321 IPC defines voluntarily causing hurt. 322 defines voluntarily causing grievous hurt. 323 deals with the punishment for causing hurt. That is up to imprisonment up to three years or fine or with both. Section 324 IPC deals with punishment for causing hurt by dangerous weapon. The punishment uh, may be up to three years imprisonment or fine or both. Section 325 IPC deals with punishment for causing grievous hurt. Punishment may be up to seven years imprisonment and fine. Section 326 deals with the punishment for causing grievous hurt with dangerous weapons. Punishment may be up to 10 years imprisonment or to life and fine. Now we are moving on to the classification of injuries. Basically injuries can be classified as two, that is mechanical injuries and thermal injuries. In mechanical injuries, there is a, a subclassification that is abrasion, contusion, laceration, incised, stab, firearm. In the coming classes, we will be dealing with all uh, these injuries in detail. Now, the second type is thermal injuries can be due to burn, scars, chemical burns, ra radiation burns, electric burns, lightning burns, and explosive burns. So, 
depending upon the causative factor there are different types of injuries the first one is mechanical or uh, physical injury and the second one is thermal injury the mechanical or physical injuries can be caused by blunt force example abrasions lacerations and contusions otherwise called as bruises the second type is caused by sharp force two varieties are there incised wound and punctured wound sometimes punctures may be puncture wound may be incised puncture or lacerated punctures we will learn in detail in the coming classes third variety is caused by firearms it can be by rifle firearm by smooth bore firearm or by country made firearms the second variety is thermal injuries that is uh, first it can be due to heat heat can cause two types of effects a generalized effect that affects the whole body or a localized effect of heat that affect uh, certain parts so generalized effect of heat the examples are heat hyperpyrexia or heat stroke heat exhaustion or heat collapse heat cramps or minor cramps the localized effect of heat can be two types burns and scalds burns is due to the application of dry heat and scald may be due to the application of moist heat the next variety of thermal injury is due to cold generalized effect of cold can cause hypothermia and localized effect of cold can produce frostbite or trench foot frostbite is due to dry cold uh, trench foot is due to wet cold the third variety of thermal injuries is can be caused by chemical agents corrosives and uh, corrosion and irritation can be caused corrosion is due to strong acids or alkalis irritation is due to weak acids or weak alkalis or vegetable or animal extracts some miscellaneous thermal injuries like lightning burns due to electric current heat and mechanical force then uh, electrical burns due to electrical current radiation it can be due to x rays ultraviolet rays radioactive substances etc then some blast injuries the cause of injury is heat mechanical force and blast wave and depending upon the severity of injury it can be simple grievous or dangerous then depending upon the time of infliction it can be anti mortem or post mortem that is before death or after death and depending upon the manner of infliction it can be classified as suicidal accidental homicidal defense wounds self inflicted wounds fabricated or factitious wounds now we will be studying the first type of first or commonest type of mechanical injury that is abrasion i know most of you have experienced this kind of injury so abrasion the definition is uh, the injuries involving superficial layers of skin the epidermis or mucous membrane and it can be caused due to the impact against some hard blunt and rough object or weapon so abrasions are basically injuries involving superficial layers of skin usually epidermis or mucous membrane are involved and abrasions can be caused by impact against some hard blunt and rough object or weapon there are some ways of producing abrasion mostly by fall by blow being dragged during vehicular accidents by teeth bite by the ropes and strings tied around body parts and finally it can be caused by scratching with a point sharp pointed object 
So the hard and blunt objects that can cause abrasion, the examples are bamboo stick, wooden stick, iron rod, hammer, cycle chain, items of furniture, the corners of uh, furniture, stone, brick, shoe, fist, hand, foot, paperweight, cricket ball, handles of weapons and blunt edges of uh, some objects. The hard, blunt and rough objects, examples are rough surfaces, rough stick, cycle chain, stone, brick, rough handles, etc. There are some criteria for the formation of abrasion wounds. Some movement along with the pressure is essential between the object or instrument or weapon and the skin. So basically, three criteria are there for the formation of abrasion wounds. First one is depending upon the mechanism of pressure, second movement against skin surface and the nature of weapon or agent involved. These three criteria, if fulfilled, can cause abrasion. As we already, as I already told, abrasion are superficial injuries. They uh, involves discontinuity in the anatomy of epidermis or mucous membrane. And abrasions are mostly caused due to friction with a hard, blunt and rough object. Scratches, the most common type of abrasion are caused by sharp pointed objects. The size of abrasion corresponds to the size of the objects that causes abrasion, except in case of scratches. The shape of the abrasion also corresponds to the shape of object, uh, except in case of scratches. The site of abrasion is mostly the site of impact. Abrasions bleed slightly, though sometimes only lymph exudation will be present. A large abrasion may be very painful and may bleed profusely. Usually these types of injuries or abrasions heal rapidly in one to two weeks. After healing, there will be no scarring because no deep structures of skin are involved. So there will be no scarring. This is a, a picture of abrasion. So the, there are about five types of abrasions. The first one is scratches or linear abrasions caused by nails, thorn, needle, etc. The second is grease. It is also called as sliding abrasion, tangential brush abrasion. Then third type is pressure abrasion or crushing abrasions or imprint abra abrasions. Example, the ligature mark, that is present in the neck, um, in case of hanging, manual strangulation by ligature, etc. Then in case of road traffic accidents, accidents, radiator grill or tire tread marks also causes pressure abrasions. Patterned abrasions uh, can be present. Example, in case of road traffic accidents, the rubber tread of the tire uh, cycle chain, necklaces, etc., can cause uh, patterned abrasions in the body. The fifth variety is atypical abrasions. So, this is another picture of abrasion. This is uh, abrasion on the chin. So, the commonest type that is uh, scratch. And scratches can be caused on the body by scratching with a sharp tip object that is, uh, for example, pin, needles, knife, thorn, nail, etc. So the characteristics of uh, scratches is that the initial part of the uh, injury is a raw surface, then there occurs heaping up of epithelium at the terminal end. So uh, this heaping up of uh, epithelium at the terminal end, if we examine with a lens, we can know the direction of injury. The second type is grease. This results when the body is dragged on the rough surface. Example, 
in case of uh, vehicular accident the body can be dragged along the road and this injury is basically due to friction so in case of uh, road traffic accidents grease abrasion will be uh, the most commonly presented feature then initial part of the injury will be serrated and there is heaping up of epithelium at the terminal end this also shows the a direction of injury so the surface of the injury shows irregular parallel lines that is furrows or grooves a violent lateral graze due to rubbing of skin example in case of dragging is called as brush burn you can see pictures of uh, uh, graze abrasion here these are the pictures of, of uh, graze abrasion there are multiple uh, parallel lines this is also grease abrasion usually uh, seen on the uh, shoulders or bony prominences this grease abrasion on the shoulder and the third variety is pressure abrasion then uh, the pressure abrasion results from pressure of the object on the body with little or no friction the most common examples for pressure abrasion are the ligation mark present on the neck in case of hanging and strangulation by ligatures the tire marks uh, being uh, during being run over by a uh, vehicle in road traffic accidents and teeth bite and nail marks these are examples for pressure abrasion the fourth variety is patterned abrasion here the impacting object after uh, coming in contact with the body part injures the epithelium and at the same time reproduces its print or pattern on the body so if it is a blow with a stick there can be a pattern of two parallel lines like railway track sometimes patterns of cycle chain whip teeth nails etc may be present on the surface then patterns in uh, strings used for hanging and strangulation by ligatures and pattern of tire headlight bumper or radiator in case of road traffic accidents so these patterned abrasion are having medico legal value this is another imprint abrasion where you can see the uh, pattern of uh, weapon in the uh, hand now regarding the age or fate of an abrasion so usually scars uh, will not happen or a permanent scar will not happen after healing so if the abrasions are fresh the color is mostly reddish due to the oozing serum and there can be uh, uh, very little bleeding then the dermis is usually congested and painful also in 12 to 24 hours the exudation the lymph exudation dries up to form a reddish scab and this scab is comprising of dried blood lymph and injured epithelial cells in 2 in 2 to 3 days the scab becomes reddish brown in 4 to 5 days the scab becomes dark brown and in 5 to 7 days the scab becomes brownish black and starts falling from the margin in 7 to 10 days the scab scab shrinks and falls off leaving deep pigmented area underneath this is the fate of an abrasion now we have to so uh, during autopsy we have to deal with uh, different types of abrasion and the On, on examination of abrasion we have to estimate whether this abrasion is a anti mortem abrasion or a post mortem abrasion for that purpose we have to thoroughly uh, study about the features of anti mortem abrasion and post mortem abrasion so in case of anti mortem abrasion there will be bleeding and post mortem abrasions shows no bleeding 
antimotor aberration can be present or may be present anywhere and postmortem aberration mostly present in bony prominences color red in case of antimortem uh, aberration yellowish in case of postmortem aberration and features of inflammation may be present in antimortem aberration not seen in postmortem aberration stages of different stages of healing may be seen in antimortem aberration never in postmortem aberration the blood and stain that are present in the aberrations uh, which are formed antimortem cannot be easily washed away due to the presence of fibrin but the blood and blood stains in the postmortem aberration can be easily washed away the margins of antimortem aberration will be diffuse but in postmortem aberration the margins will be clear cut in antimortem aberration the injury merges into the surrounding tissues but in postmortem aberration it will be a clear cut injury antimortem injuries or antimortem aberrations may show uh, swelling due to exudation so the scab will be slightly raised and in postmortem aberration even if scab is present scab will be depressed instead of uh, raising and the enzyme levels will be increased in antimortem aberration and uh, enzyme levels will never be increased in uh, postmortem aberration it will not be uh, relevant so what is the medical legal importance of aberration as you all know aberration is a very common injury and aberration helps us to know the nature of injury what will be the weapon or object that has been used for the assault what is the age of the injury and therefore the time of crime can be calculated then the direction of injury whether the injury is antimortem or postmortem can be estimated and postmortem aberration may result due to assault or due to mishandling or during shifting of the dead body so this is the medical legal importance of aberration we can uh, estimate whether the injury is suicidal homicidal or accidental this can be done by considering the site number size and shape of injury and aberration is mostly accidental and very rarely suicidal sometimes the purpose of injury can also be estimated example ligature mark if present on neck or a pressure uh, aberration present on neck can be caused by ligature mark Uh, due to hanging or strangulation by ligature nail marks on neck can be caused by throttling nail marks on and around the nose and mouth may be caused by smothering nail marks on and around vulva may be uh, the result of rape nail marks on and around anus can be uh, the result of sodomy or anal intercourse and sometimes various uh, teeth bite marks on the body shows cruelty at times aberration is a uh, cost uh, that is uh, it can be fabricated or forged to support a false charge upon someone and uh, aberration indicates likely chances of injury to the internal viscera also and uh, an aberration on cornea can lead to blindness uh, which is a grievous injury now we have to differentiate some uh, marks that may occur in our body from abrasions sometimes excoriation of skin around the genitals uh, may be present in a little child or a small kid and this can be presented as an abrasion but it is not a 
uh, abrasion due to weapon, but the excoriation of skin can be due to excreta. So this has to be differentiated. Then sometimes uh, bodies show bed sores. So we have to diagnose bed sores considering the history of the case and the site of the lesion. Usually bed sores are see seen on dependent parts, mostly on the back. Sometimes uh, post-mortem injuries can be presented as abrasions uh, and this can be uh, produced by insects and etc. Erosions of skin produced by insect and etc. So ants injure the natural orifices. So the site of injury will be the natural orifices. And also some moist skin folds like angles of mouth and eyes neck, axilla, and inguinal region. Marine animals bites the projecting body parts like eyelids, ear, nose, lips, nipple, labia, penis, scrotum, fingers, and toes. So the site of the abrasion uh, may uh, suggest the presence of the biting of marine animals. So in these injuries, that is injury caused, er, uh, erosion caused by insects or ants or by the marine animals, there will be no signs of inflammation and vital reaction. And also the edges will appear irregular and nibbled. And this completes the end of the topic abrasion. In the next class, you'll be learning about uh, contusions and lacerations. Thank you.